Welcome back. First video of 2020. It's been kind of a long hiatus, so we'll just jump right into it. We're looking at booleans in Houdini today. This is a more intermediate video, so if you're not comfortable moving things around in Houdini, you might want to check out one of the earlier videos to see just kind of the basics and get a feel for how to add nodes and move around in the graph. The basic setup for booleans in Houdini is just to drop down a boolean node and then choose your operator, either subtract, union, or intersect. For the most part, I just use intersect and subtract. Union merges the mesh together, and it's not really the best necessarily, depending on what you want to do with UVs. And shatter is great, but really more for details later once we get into that. One of the things that's really nice about Houdini is that you can actually use one mesh as both your A and your B input. In this case, I've got a box going out to a transform that kind of squishes it, moves it around a little bit, and then wires it back in as the B input. If I then go back later and decide that I want to make the box larger or smaller or kind of change its dimensions in any way, all that information flows out through the network and then back into the Boolean. So I can make large scale changes without having to go back and change a bunch of individual shapes. Given the mess that booleans generate, sometimes it makes more sense to go ahead and just box model something, or if you want something that's subdivided, you can go ahead and do that and just merge it in with a merge node. That can also save you some time later on during retopology and setting up UVs. Here I'm modeling the grip for the weapon. It makes more sense in this case to just use regular box modeling techniques and keep it a little bit more organic with a subdivide node. You can use poly splits to add divisions vertically and horizontally. And with the poly split nodes, if you set it to loop, you can either leave it at zero and just place one loop wherever you want it, set it to one and place a loop right in the center, or add as many loops as you want evenly spaced uh, along the axis of the mesh. The new interactive modeling features in Houdini work really well with booleans too. You just kind of have to get used to how that works. If you haven't used them before, uh, you make sure that your mouse cursor is over the 3D viewport. Press S to enter selection. You can use one, two, or three to change which component you want to select, faces, edges, vertices, and then T, E, or R to move, rotate, or scale. You can also use the tab menu to add additional stops like poly extrude or bevels or whatever you want but you have to make sure that your cursor is still over the 3D viewport when you hit tab to search for those. If it's not, if you're in the graph view, then you're not gonna get the interactive version of that. So it's not gonna automatically apply your selection. Here I'm adding a poly extrude. And once you've added it interactively, then you can go into the settings in the node that it creates and you can add a divisions. You can change the way it moves the extrusion. So in this case, rather than just use the extrude amount which uses the surface normal. I'm going into transform and using global values to just move it forward and backwards. So you get you get a lot more control that way than you do uh, just using the, the extrusion. At this point I'm just kind of getting into refinement of the block out and starting to get to the point where I'm going to be adding details. So I'm just kind of looking at you know, where things can be refined and perfected. There's some tips that can help you out though as you're working with booleans. As you refine your positioning, think about engineering and think about how it's going to actually work. Think about how easy it's going to be to hold and in terms of ergonomics, where things are going to go, but also of the function of that piece. So uh, here I'm kind of putting in the rails and putting in the system that's going to divide that. But I want to think about where the projectiles are actually going to enter that chamber, how they're going to get into the coils of wire to be accelerated. As you're working with booleans, you can also save some time with some of the procedural functions of Houdini. So simple things like copying presets. If you copy a preset from one node uh, and then you can do paste relative references in another place, that will save you a ton of time because then you don't have to keep going back and editing and moving uh, multiple pieces around. You can just change one and then other things will automatically change with it. Uh, clip and polyfill can also save time here. I've got this really long tube that's cutting out the entire weapon and I just want it to go all the way back to the uh, magazine. I don't want it to, to cut through the entire thing. Rather than having to continually kind of resize and scale and move this tube around though, I can just add a clip and use the clip to cut it and then put a polyfill in. And not only will that give me a little bit more control, but it's also going to save me some time because the polyfill I can set to either do a quad grid or a triangle grid and go ahead and do some of the retopology for 
my later future self who's going to have to do retopology for this entire weapon. As you're working, you also want to clean up the graph a little bit. Another tip is to use polybevel as an intersect rather than doing selections and then doing polybevel. As you change things and you add geometry earlier or later, you can mess those selections up. But if you use another shape and polybevel that, you kind of keep the selections separate so that you can still go back and move things very quickly without having to worry about doing a changing your selection, changing the number of edges that you're actually beveling. As you're doing your bevel too, it's always good to try to set the number of divisions to something that's going to give you quads. So in this case, I had a triangle right there in the center. If I just up it by one, now I've got a nice quad grid in the middle. And once you've kind of got your basic shape in place, it's always good to kind of clean up your graph too and think about what components are going to be separate and how it might actually be animated. So anything that needs to move around, you can go ahead and start to separate out. I use nulls to to kind of call those pieces. So anything that's got a null below it, I can then kind of just grab that null, object merge it somewhere else, and then do retopology or do anything uh, separately to that that I need to, rather than having to kind of break the whole mesh apart. This keeps all of your objects separate, and it also gives you the option to do booleans on some, but not everything. In this case here, I've cut out the inside because I want to have a bolt that moves backwards and forwards. The problem is that I need to hollow that out. Now, the fastest way to do that actually is just to do another Boolean and do a subtract. And in this case here, what I'm doing again is one of those reflexive Booleans where I'm using the shape that I've created earlier. So the number of bevels match and everything else is kind of already done. If I go back up earlier in the network and change any of that stuff, it is all gonna flow down to the, the end for me. But the problem is that that whole shape from earlier is too big. So what I do is just clip off the top, do a polyfill, and set the polyfill to quads so that those quads then go where I need them to. And again, that saves me some time in retopology later. So at this point, I pretty much have the block out done and it's really just getting into adding more details. I'm gonna to need to add the coils and kind of separate out that interior part there. I'm gonna to need to add details onto the magazine and onto the charging handle here. I'm gonna to need to add the trigger and all of the smaller pieces. So I hope that was helpful. This is the first video in a series we'll do on booleans. And again, this has been more intermediate. The entire series will be a little bit more intermediate. Uh, and then next one, we'll look at kind of adding the details, uh, the smaller bits and pieces. And then after that, we'll look at doing retopology and some of the different options that you have in Houdini for actually turning this into a clean mesh. So I'll see you in the next video.